Corrie Tin Boom was a Dutch watchmaker who saved the lives of hundreds of Jews from the gas chambers. All of that during World War II. By the miracle of God's grace, she survived a German concentration camp, even forgave her captors as part of her undying faith. Larry Loftus has written a book, and it reveals the truths of Corey's life that have never been made public before. It's called The Watchmaker's Daughter, the true story of World War II heroine Corey Tin Boom. Please welcome Larry Loftus. Larry, great to have Thank you here. You. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, I love the story of Corey Tin Boom. I've actually been to Harlem in the Netherlands and been to her home, the watch shop, the mm -hmm. museum now, where they have. And, you know, it's just riveting to realize what her family did to save people that they didn't even know. And they weren't even of the same faith. These, they were Christians and they right. saved Jewish people. Why did they do it? Well, the Tin Boom family has a very long history dating back to their great grandfather, who was loved that they were they were Dutch Reformed. They loved the Jews. Uh, prayed for Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That went to the grandfather. Then it went to Casper, who was Corey's father. Corey's mother had died fairly young, and it, it was just this generation of very godly men that loved Jerusalem and 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 prayed for Jews. Right around 50 years ago, there was a real interest in Corey Ten Boom, and uh, the Billy Graham Association did a movie about mm -hmm. her. It was, it was wonderful. And there was a book that Corey Ten Boom wrote, an autobiography. In this book, The Watchmaker's Daughter, you talk about there are things that have never been told before the true story. Let's talk about what are some things that maybe we haven't really known about Corey Ten Boom's. Yeah, most people know about the hiding place, but Corey didn't actually write that. If you look on the below her name on the cover, it says with John and Elizabeth Sherrill, hmm. uh, professional writers. That's yeah. who wrote the book. Corey did write an autobiography right after the war in 1947 called A Prisoner and Yet, but it was a very small Christian publisher and she's not a writer, so it didn't go anywhere. Hmm. So decades later, the Sherrills found her and said, we love your story, can we, can we write it again? And I didn't even know that. It wasn't until her archives are at the Billy Graham Center at Wheaton College, and they've got everything that she had, everything, mm -hmm. all of her letters and prison letters, photographs from the time whenever, when, these, when this was going on, all of her passports, scrapbooks, and newsletters. And in one of her, a couple of her magazines, she says that, that she's waiting for the Sherrills to finish. Um, mm -hmm. So the Sherrills didn't have all of the information because they're going on Corey's memory from 30 years before. Yeah. And so I had to do the research to find out what really happened. And Corey didn't keep a diary. So again, we're going on memory. And fortunately, one of the people that stayed in their home, he was a Dutch, the, the Dutch boys had to hide as well because the Germans would snatch them off the street and send them to a, concert, and mm. send them to a work factory in Germany because their men were at war. So they had to hide as well. And a Dutch boy named Hans Poli was the first ref permanent refugee into their home and stayed longer than anybody else. He kept a diary. And so I was able to, to track what happened in that home every single day throughout the entire period that they were hiding Jews and Dutch boys. What are some of the big missing pieces that maybe haven't really been uh, explored fully about Corey Ten Boom's life? We know that she was part of a family that uh, hid Jews and protected them, but then ended up herself going to the concentration camp. Yeah, the, 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 you mentioned the first big thing is that she forgave everybody, not, not yeah. just the captors, she forgave the Germans in general, but she forgave even the person who betrayed their family. She was betrayed not by a German, but by another Dutchman. Why? And, and what was the uh, rationale? Was it just what, to preserve themselves? Basically, okay. because the Nazis controlled, it was an occupied country, so the Nazis controlled everything, and you might get special favors. So he betrayed their family, and that was the hardest one for her to forgive, but she did forgive him. She came out of a concentration camp barely alive, and not only did she forgive, but then she started telling her story and give witness of what God had done in her life. And I think a lot of people have said, Corey, what God did in your life, he let you go to a concentration camp, you could have died. She comes out the most optimistic person in the world. What was that secret? Yeah, not only that, but she started, uh, the first thing that she did is she started basically uh, uh, almost a convalescent center for people that have been harmed by the war, mm. emotionally harmed, spiritually harmed. Think of all of the people that lost husbands and lost brothers and sons. And so the, she opened her own home for, for, for people like this. In fact, they, she had another benefactor that let her use 
basically a mansion because she had five sons. Four of them had already died in the war. Mm. And she said, just use my homes, do your center. So Corey started bringing in refugees, people that had been injured, impaired, or, or just emotionally damaged from the war. And then she did it in Germany. She went to Germany and opened a center in Darmstadt, Germany, which was a concentration camp. And so in the book, I've got photos that came out of her archives at Wheaton College that shows the before and after when it was a concentration camp. And then was Corey, when Corey finished, decorated with, there were flower boxes in all the windows and flowers all around it. So she did that actually three different times. I, I think there's just such an extraordinary story of her. Uh, there, there's obviously a lot more that people didn't get simply by reading The Hiding Place, which first introduced us to her. Um, and I hope people will read The Watchmaker's Daughter so that they can find the rest of the story. As Paul Harvey used to say, that's right. and now the rest, rest of, of the story. story. And that's what you've given us. What a great gift of a remarkable human being who really did live and serve the Lord in a way that very few people could ever imagine. Larry, thank you for being here. And this is the book. It's called The Watchmaker's Daughter. It's available right now. I hope you read the book. You can order it at all major bookstores or online. You can also get it on Larry Loftus's website. If you want to know how to get there, it's easy. Go to Huckabee.tv. We will connect you. We're going to make it easy for you to get this book, and I hope you do.